Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. These series of videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming from another DAW or whether you've never used any DAW before and you're just getting into using Studio One. These series of videos are gonna help you get up and running as quick and easily as possible with no fuss and no muss to help you navigate your way through Studio One, set up a basic song file and give you a basic overview of all the more common features used in Studio One, both for recording music and for mixing music. Once you've watched this entire series here on YouTube and you want to take your mixing or your recording to the next level, I highly recommend that you check out these three training courses on my website at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You want to check out Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy, Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume One, and Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume Two. Those three courses are designed to help you go from what you're going to learn in these free set of videos and actually help you start making music and mixing music in your home studio. The links will be in the description box below, and there's also a 25% discount coupon that you can use at checkout to get 25% off any one of the courses I just mentioned. So thanks for joining me in this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video here, I'm gonna show you how to set up your IO for your interface now that we've created our song file in the last video. So here we are in our song file that we created in the last video. And now before we get started and we're gonna start recording, or if we're gonna import audio and start mixing, first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our interface, our IO is set up properly. So how you do that on a Mac is you come up here to where it says Studio One and you click on Studio One and you go to Preferences. Now, if you're working on a PC, at the top of this menu here, you're gonna see over, I think, next to the transport, either before or after, you're gonna see an Options menu. And then you're gonna to go to the Preferences window there. So PC is a little different than Mac in the way you get to this window, but the window is pretty much exactly the same. So again, if you're on a PC, go to Options, which will be next to the transport, and go to Preferences, or if you're on a Mac, go to Studio One and go to Preferences. And again, we're going to do an entire video on the entire preferences window because you're going to spend a lot of time there. It's a lot of things you're going to use while you're working with Studio One. But for this example, we're just going to go to our um, I.O., our in and outs. So when you come up here in preferences, you want to look at the top here and go to audio setup. OK, and on the audio setup, we want to make sure that under the audio device tab, OK, you have processing and audio device, our playback device and our recording device is set to whatever your interface happens to be. Now, PreSonus allows you to play back on one interface and record on another, so you can see two different interfaces at the same time. That's for more of an advanced setup. Don't worry about that if you're someone that's new to Studio One. Just make sure that your audio interface is showing, and if you click this little down, triangle, you'll see all the audio interfaces that are available to you that are plugged into your computer. Mine happens to be a Universal Audio Apollo, so I'm gonna make sure that that's checked. Under device block size, you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be doing some recording, recording instruments for your session, that you click this drop down arrow and you wanna choose somewhere between say 64, and maybe 128 or 256. Uh, this is all gonna help determine the actual latency that you may uh, hear when you're trying to say, for example, record an acoustic guitar, you're strumming that acoustic guitar, what you hear in your headphones from the time you strum it to where you actually hear it in your headphones, that delay time is really, it's called latency. Um, when you're recording, the general rule of thumb is you wanna set it as high as possible, okay, without hearing any latency in your headphones. Typically on most computers, that's gonna be somewhere between 64 and 256. You're gonna to have to experiment with that depending on your system. Every computer's different. But if you set it right in the middle, say 128, that's a good starting point. Your sample rate again was set up when we created our song file in the last video. So we set it up at 44.1 uh, kilohertz, so that's where it is. And as we change our device block size, you'll see the input latency and the output latency is gonna change. So right now, 128, we're at 9.52 milliseconds of input and 3.336 milliseconds of output. If I change that to say 32, for example, you'll see that the latency changes. It gets shorter, okay? The higher I go, the longer the latency is. Okay, so again, just so you know, you're gonna have to experiment with that. So that's what's on this page. But from there, we're gonna come down to this bottom uh, left-hand corner, we're gonna go to Song Setup button. And that is gonna bring us to this screen. 
<clears throat> then we want to make sure we click on the audio IO setup tab. See this at the top right hand corner here. We got general information. We're going to go through all these other screens later, but just go to audio IO setup. And this is going to show us our interface and we're going to have two tabs here, an input tab and an output tab. Let's start on the input section. On the input, you may have some um, inputs already set up as a default, depending on your audio interface. Um, we're just going to go ahead, we're going to highlight all of these, and we're just going to remove these and start from scratch, just so I can show you how to do this. Now, you may have some that are showing up already when you first get to the screen. You may not. If you don't, don't worry about it. Your audio interface will show up here, and then across the top here, you're going to see all the audio inputs that are available to you based on your audio interface. Okay, and it's gonna look different for everybody. But let's say you just wanna set up because you're gonna record one instrument at a time. You're gonna record yourself playing guitar. You're gonna record yourself singing, let's say for example. <clears throat> and we wanna set up one audio input for you to do some recording. The way you do that is you come down here and you can either add a mono or a stereo uh, input. <clears throat> More times than not, it's gonna be mono, unless you're recording something like a keyboard, for example where you have a left out and a right out on your keyboard and you go into uh, into one input on your audio interface, you can add a stereo, but for most applications, it's gonna be mono. So I'm gonna click add mono. You're gonna see we're gonna get an input here, okay? And we can double click in that and we could call that whatever we want. So if this is gonna be, see, the first input on your audio interface, you can call it input one. If it's gonna be a vocal or a guitar, you can just re rename this if you want to, vocal, whatever you wanna call it. You can also color code it by clicking on this little gray box next to the tag. Left click, you'll get a color code box. This is new in version 4.5, by the way. So you can color code it to red or gray, whatever you want to color code it to, okay? And then, a and then you're going to see um, now what you need to do once you add the input is you have to tell it what audio, what physical input am I plugging in on my interface? In our example, let's say we're plugging into the very first input, so we're gonna click there, okay? And you're gonna see it's gonna highlight here, okay? If it's on, the, say it's the second input on your interface, the physical jack on your interface, say it's the second one, you can just click there. But typically it's gonna be the first one to keep things simple. Once we've done that, we're gonna hit apply down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, and you see a little M is gonna come into this box now. M stands for mono. If this was a stereo track, and I'll show you by adding a stereo track. So input two now, you'll see there's two boxes for left, right, stereo left, right. Let's say this is a keyboard. Okay, and let's say we wanna change the color to blue. Now we have a left, right. Say it's on channel three, four. Or let's say it's on channel two, uh, one, two is gonna be a stereo pair, three, four is gonna be a second pair, okay? So if we already have something in on channel one, we can't choose channel two and three, it's gotta be one, two, three, four, five, six, understand? So three, four, hit apply, and you'll see we have a left, right here. And you can see there's a little bit of, uh, you can see a little audio meteor coming up because my vocal mic that I'm talking to you on right now happens to be plugged into channel four on my audio interface. So you're gonna see some audio here on channel four, just disregard that. Okay, so that's how you do your inputs. Okay, now let's go over to our outputs tab. Again, it's gonna default probably to channel one, two, if you have your physical speakers plugged into the physical outputs on the back of your audio interface. Typically, on most interfaces, it's gonna be one, two. But again, you can change that. If your audio interface, if your main outputs are say five, six, you can click five, six, hit apply, and there you go. But mine's gonna be one, two, it typically is. Okay, and once again, you can color code this, whatever color you want. You can change, it's gonna default, it's gonna say main is gonna be the default name, but you can change that. You can change that to uh, output or whatever you wanna call it, okay? So once you've set up your inputs and your outputs, and every time you make a change, you gotta make sure you hit apply before you hit okay, so it kind of accepts it, okay? That's how you set up your inputs and your outputs. Now you're gonna hit okay. Now I wanna show you where those inputs reside. So now we have two, we set up what? One mic input on channel one and we set up on channel three, four, a keyboard stereo input. So now if I come uh, over here to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the mix button, that's gonna bring up our mixing console. Okay, here's our acoustic guitar track, and we'll talk more about the console in another video. But if we come over here to the left-hand side and we click on this inputs button, you're gonna see now our inputs. 
the vocal track that we created on track one, and then a stereo track on three, four. And once again, you can see my you can see my voice kind of coming in on channel four because my microphone happens to be plugged into that. And again, we'll walk through the more details of this in a later video. And you can see the colors that we chose. The vocal was a red and the keyboard was blue. Okay, so that is where you see your inputs. And if you were recording a vocal like I'm doing now, you can see how hot uh, my signal's coming into my channel here. Okay, which is uh, running around a negative six dB or so, negative eight dB, depending on how loud I'm speaking into the microphone. The standard uh, kind of rule of thumb when you're recording audio is you want to be somewhere around a negative 10 to a negative 12 dB. And we'll talk more about, about that later in one of our recording courses. And if I just want to show you, if you want to adjust your audio input level, if, if I'm coming in around a negative 6 and I'm coming in a little hot, I could come up here, and this is new to version 4.5, and I can control the level coming into Studio One just by clipping, on my, just left clicking on the input gain and pulling my mouse down. And you can see I'm pulling down the audio, pulling down the audio, pulling down the audio. In this example, I'm pulling it down 17 dB. Now look where my vocal's coming in, around a negative 24 dB, okay? That might be a little too conservative. We wanna raise that back up again, left click, raise it back up a little bit until we're around a negative 10, negative 12 at its highest point. And that'll reduce our input about negative 7.7. .7. And you can see on the meter now, I'm somewhere between negative 12, negative 15. Again, we could go even a little bit less conservative, take down about 4 dB, 3.8 dB. And now I'm running around a negative 12, which is kind of like the optimum level for recording audio. And again, if you wanna know more about that, check out Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy on homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I talk all about how to really, you know, get into the nitty gritty of how to record in Studio One. This is just kind of a beginner's guide and an overview. Okay, but I wanted to show you that that's how that works. So once you've done that now and you've now created your inputs uh, on your audio interface, you could go ahead and you can start recording some audio. So thanks for joining me in this video. Come back for the next video and we'll talk a little bit more about how to navigate your way through Studio One. So I'll see you guys in the next video.